Hello dear viewers on YouTube, this is DZ Maven coming at you straight from the desk for another Gunpla review on Scripted. So today I'm taking a look at a Joe Goog, Master Grade, the 1.0. This is the Shars Joe Goog 1.0. This is a pretty old kit. It came out in December of 1996, which is nearly 25 years ago, so... <laughs> this kit has some age on it. It came out for 3,000 yen, which is nowadays on the cheaper end of uh, the Master Grade price scale. But I guess maybe back then that was a little bit more expensive, because it's been quite a while, and... Inflation tends to make things more expensive over time, but anyway, that's about 30 ish dollars. About anyway, let's move on to the gallery. Switch over. Nope. All right, so here's the box art. You already saw the box art. Here's the side of the box. Now, this kit does have a little bit of an internal frame. It's mostly in the legs and the arms and a bit inside the torso. That's really kind of about it. You do get the little cloth pipes that go on the inside of the leg. Kind of the same thing that you've probably seen on the Master Grade Gundam Mark II. Here's some more pictures of the kit. All painted up and detailed. They do give you the option of a different backpack with this kit. Here's the inside. Photo insert which is something that they don't do on Master Grade anymore. I don't remember exactly when they stopped doing this, but I know they still had it, I think, around the Master Grade 1.5 of the Gundam, they still had it. But I want to say, like, not too long after that, they probably stopped it. Here's the manual. Traditional, old, old-type Master Grade manual. Inside, to give you a little history of the Pacific Mobile suit. Um, th in this case, specifically the Jogoog, you can consider the YMS-14 Jogoog as a prototype, or the MS-14S Commander-type Jogoog. As far as I'm aware, they're pretty much the same things, as the YMS is the, pro is the prototype designation for it. Here's the inside book, more information, and they give you a little diagram that kind of points out what is what on the Jogoog. They don't, again, they don't really do this on the uh, Master Grade kits anymore. It would be kind of nice to have, have if they uh, did this. Also, you get this nice little artwork included inside the uh, manual. It gets you a little look at the internal mechanical detail. As envisioned by a artist. This is not how it looks in the actual kit, but it's nice to uh, have this anyway. Uh, Construction-wise, again, th this is an older match grade kit. It's going to be more like a advanced high-grade kit nowadays rather than what we know as in terms of what we expect out of a master grade today so here is a uh, painted up more shots of the kits action poses it comes with um sticker markings and dry transfers uh, sticker markings on these really old master grade kits from the 20th century were not all that good they are kind of blocky and thick, so you may or may not want to use them. I, don't, I, I haven't bought like a really old match grade kit of recent time, so I kind of wonder if Bandai has improved the quality of these stickers, or they're still using the same old ones they used from way back when, which were kind of awful to use, so it'll, it'll be interesting to find out someday. Anyway, or internal artwork. Again, the construction of this kit is pretty simple. It's not that hard to uh, put together from what I recall. Again, if you built like an RE-1100 kit, this is probably very similar to that. Alright, so let's just get on to actual pictures of the kit here. So, uh, this kit is fully painted. I did fully paint this kit, so you will be get to enjoy the painted version of a really old kit with a uh, that's probably been fixed up a little bit better than what you would have straight out of the box here. 
Appearance-wise, it's a pretty nice re representation of the Jogug. I have mine marked with the YMS-14 designation. This is it without the backpack. There is a little plate on the back here that kind of comes off. If you look underneath the skirt, there you do get three little thruster bells that are underneath the the bottom of the back skirt. They can move around a little bit. Here's a little bit of what you can expect out of the arm articulation. It's okay. It's decent. It's not anything that you would expect nowadays, but I guess for the time it was all right. Oh, I do want to mention that inside the shoulder joint, they have these little rubber accordion piece that kind of goes in there. Uh, the the newer Jogu 2.0 does not have that. I think it has like a series of plastic plates that uh, go together. Uh, the lower le lower articulation of the kid in the legs is not that good. This is about the best you're going to get out of the leg pose right here. The legs will not do a 90 degree bend, as I will demonstrate for you in a bit. The hands is these old three finger, index finger, thumb style hands, which are generally considered pretty awful. So, But you do get some fixed pose hands with the kit, but unfortunately you don't get any like holding hands that are fixed posed. The cockpit does open up, you get a little Char Asimov figure that goes in there. I went ahead and painted them up, stuck them in there. And here's what the inside of the head here. There's a little, there's a little screw tab inside the head that you can kind of move around to uh, move the mono eye around. And there it is with the headpiece back on there. There's another look underneath the skirt. Here's the bottom of the feet, and there are more thrusters you can see on the bottom side of the uh, the bell bottoms of the leg. There's a little bit of a look at what's underneath the shoulder armor here. A little bit of detail in there, and a little bit of detail in the forearm. And here's a look at the inside of the lower half of the leg. Again, you got these cloth piping pieces. It's, it's the same thing as what's in the Gundam Mark II, so if, if you've ever dealt with that before, it's the same thing. Here it is. I'm back with the beam... Probably going to butcher this, the Naginata. The, they call it the Beam Naginata. You know, people are, people are going to complain about that. It's just, just, no, I'm trying to do this off the top of my head. I'm not looking at the actual word here, so. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. There's a little clip that goes on the back of the backpack that holds that in. Here it is with the beam blades attached. These are the saber type blades. They kind of stick on either end. Uh, they don't really fit in too well. They're a little bit loose. So as you can see in my picture here, the front one's kind of sagging a bit. And here it is with the straight long blade. I kind of prefer the long blade. It makes it look like a giant long beam saber. And here it is with holding the shield. It's not the best grip on the shield. I mean, the, the handle kind of slips around the the hand pretty well but because the wrist joint's kind of weak it can't really hold the shield up that way and there's really no nothing else that attaches the shield to the arm so it's just being held by the wrist pretty much so as you can imagine that's not the best uh, connection there but you can stick it on the back it's a little adapter to plug it onto the back here here's the beam rifle it's, it's a pretty nice beam rifle uh, the only issue I remember having with the beam rifle is that the little clear lens piece uh, tends to fall out. So uh, if you build this kit, keep an eye on that. Because there's, no, there's not really any tab or anything to hold that in. It just kind of fits in there. So you may have to use a little bit of uh, plastic cement to uh, keep it in there. Here it is posing with the beam rifle. More poses. I did manage to get it up on an action base despite... This kit being so old, it doesn't have an action base connector on it, so <laughs> you have to use the fork attachment to get it on there, so it's not the best connection, you just have to kind of balance it on there and just uh, hope it doesn't tip over. And 
it is up, up in the air. And here's a little look at that alternative backpack. Um, if you look back at the manual photo, you can actually see what it looks like when it's completed. I've uh, taken some of the parts off of this thing over the years and used them on other kits, so I don't have all the parts for it. So this is all that's left of it. So, But anyway, that will just plug straight into the back of the kit if you decide to use that. And here it is with a bazooka. This is the bazooka off the dome kit, the Master Grade dome. So the, the, the kit does not come with this bazooka, I'm just saying. But if you do have it, you can actually stick a bazooka on this kit and it will be able to hold it. And I think, just my opinion, I think it looks a little better than the beam rifle. Just my opinion. Here is posing with the beam sword saber here. And here's the accessories that come with the kit here. Like I said, it comes with some uh, fixed post hands, two open hands, and two closed fist hands. You get the option of the uh, high mobility backpack, so if you want to use that, you can use it. Just ping it up and stick it on there. You got the uh, two, uh, two sets of the beam blades, the uh, beam naginata, the beam rifle, the clip for holding the beam naginata on, and the shield, and that's your accessories. There is also a little tiny shard, standing shard, as the mold figure, um, I lost it. I, I don't know where it is, so <laughs> it's not here. Anyway, we can move on to the live view here. Hmm. We so I have my overhead nicer camera here. You can see the kit here, and as you can probably tell right away, it is a little bit on the uh, loose side, so. What I have noticed with this kit, uh, in posing and even just leaving it standing, um, because of the weak uh, hip, it will kind of start to do splits at its standing over time. But again, that's just because of the age and because they use poly caps in the hip joints, which is really not something that I see too often anymore in master grade kits, which probably for a good reason because it, it doesn't really hold up over time. But just to kind of Show off articulation here real quick here while we got it on the live camera. Head, you can pretty much get it all the way around. And look up and down a little bit here. Like so. You can pull a whole head piece off to reveal that inside piece where you can adjust the mono eye and everything. You might want to use like a coin or something to turn that. It's probably the easier way to do that. The arm. You can get all the way around, but then it starts to kind of entangle with this uh, accordion piece that's in here. So, don't want to knacker that up too much. Oh, and the cockpit's starting to open up here. Anyway, there's a the cockpit. You open it up, you got to kind of lift the front of the chest up here. Close that, and then close it down so it doesn't pop open. Anyway, that's... You can kind of see with the uh, chest bend here. A little, There's a little bit of a chest bend. There's not a whole lot here. Elbow at the arm. It's it, it's decent. It gets the job done. You can also rotate the lower arm here too. Like so. There's hands. I painted the hands up just to kind of match the color of the kit. I don't know why I did that. I just I thought it would look cool this way. That's what I did. Also, I do notice that it does kind of split a little bit here at the bottom. Press it back together every now and then. Doesn't want to... Doesn't want to stay together down there. Moving on to the lower legs here. So, that's about as far forward as you're going to get. There's no... There's no skirt that's going to open up down here. It's all a fixed piece right here. All the way back. And that is your... Knee bend. That's that's all you're gonna get out of the knee bend right there. That's it. It is very kind of loose right here. So we'll go kind of loosey goosey with the knee here. <laughs> the feet. You can kind of move the feet back and forth a little bit before things start popping out. All the way down. All the way forward. This little piece can open up a little bit, but not a whole lot. Yeah. I'm gonna try putting it in the other camera here. You can see it from this angle. 
with my not quite so nice webcam. This is what it looks like when it's just standing. So, as you can see, it's a little. It's a, it's a, it's a little wiggle. Uh, as it has the the wiggles, as we, as I will describe it as. But like I said, said I have noticed sometimes when I have this thing standing on the shelf, it'll gradually start to do the splits over time at a standing, even if I'm not touching it. So. This is something to kind of be aware of with this kit here. Anyway, let's move on to accessories here. So this is that back panel right here. This can actually come out. I don't know if I can actually show you here on camera. Let's pull this whole piece out. But if you want to use the alternate backpack, you have to uh, take this piece out and get it out without knackering and knackering it up here. It doesn't want to come out. Come out. There we go. Got it. So if you're going to use this off backpack, this plugs right in here. Just like that. So, easy. It's a nice backpack, and I probably could have painted this up, but... I use it for scrap parts, so that's all there is of that. It's back in. If you use the uh, beam negative as I show, it plugs into the center hole here. You can get it in there and just that little piece opens up like so. And this just goes right in. Like that. So. Now there is actually another uh, slot behind here. This is really hard to open up, so I'm probably not going to do this on camera here. But there is a little poly cap behind here and... I originally thought you could probably stick the uh, beam Naganata down here, but you can't do that on this kit because the polycap is too small for this. But this is actually for the Jogu Cannon kit. The Jogu Cannon has a different adapter for the uh, the beam the beam weapon that'll go right there. So I suppose if you wanted to, you could modify this to uh, thin out the the peg, or maybe try and get a different polycap in there and maybe get that in there. It's an idea. You want to do that shield i kind of talked about shield already it only it's only held by here right there so in order to get that you have to slip it around the hand like so and that's it that's the only way it holds the shield like i said it's all dependent on the wrist joint here which is not great so it's kind of hard to pose with the shield so not all I can really say about that. <laughs> beam rifle. Again, the beam rifle is pretty nice. It's nice looking. You'll have to paint the uh, clear piece in here. It, it doesn't come pink or anything like that. And as I mentioned, you need to make sure you kind of glue that in so it doesn't fall out. And it goes into the hand well enough. Get it in there. So in there. Not the best grip because again these hands are kind of terrible. So. Oh yes, we live in luxury today of having fixed post hands on our kits. We don't have to deal with this anymore. And yeah, the cockpit's opening up again on me. They shut. They shut. As I mentioned, fixed pose hands, two fists, two open hands. I didn't paint these, so this is just what they look like out of the box. And lastly are these bean blades here. You get two of these saber blades and two of these long blades here. I prefer the long blades, like I mentioned. They just look a little bit better to me. and they're, They go in easier. Uh, now, if you do want to notice here, if you want to point this out, the beam blades can only go in one way. They're not round pegs. They are kind of a half circle, as you can see right there. So you have to match up the right beam saber blade to go in here, because you can't just put any blade in here any which way. You have to go in a certain way, which is kind of a bother, to be honest. So anyway, that's what the both the long blades in here, and this is quite long this way so 
as you see on my mat here. Way taller than even the gel glue itself is. And then you have the saber blades, which I have found don't really stay in very well. You always gotta figure out which end is supposed to go in on these things. There we go, that one's in. I know they're supposed to be flipped, they're supposed to be facing opposite ways. There we go, there we go. So that's the spinning saber blade, and this is the one that sags on this end for me, so... Just, or it just falls right out and is not lost forever. It's right there. <laughs> so there's really no slot or anything for the hand. It just kind of it's just kind of held in there, and that's that's it. It's not again. It's not a really good grip here. It's just that's what it is. So. So anyway, that's really probably about all I really have to say about this kit. It's old. I think visually it looks fine. If you uh, prefer this look of the Joe Goog, I mean, this is probably okay. Or if you're a collector of old Gunpla kits, by means, by all means, certainly uh, look up this kit if you're interested. It's cheap. It's, it's not that expensive. So, especially considering it's kind of a larger Master Grade kit. Um... But if you're looking for a Master Grade Joe Goog, uh, just get the 2.0. It's better in every way, every way possible, pretty much. <laughs> I have the 2.0 Joe Goog. I have the mass production one, which I built many years ago, and it's actually a really nice kit. I, I really like it. Uh, this one, it's okay. It's again, this is this is like. One of those kits that's like clearly like been replaced by the 2.0, so probably for really obvious good reasons here. I think we can get underneath the uh, skirt there if we want to see what's up under under here. That's the uh, brush to bells there. But yeah. Anyway, that is the Master Grade Joe Goog. Yours, Joe Goog, the YMS14 or MS14S, depending on what you prefer. And uh, yeah. It is nice that it comes with the option for the uh, different backpack, though. We'll give, give it some credit for that. So, anyway, I hope you found this review entertaining and maybe somewhat informative. And look forward to the next review whenever I get to it. Anyway, I hope you have a great day and uh, take care. Bye bye.